Hello, is it recording? Well, we finally got this thing to record. I don't know what's up with this VCR, but uh, about after about 10 tries, every time you would push the record button, it would refuse to do that and instead decide that it wanted to play, so apparently it's like a rogue machine or something. Who knows what's going on with it, but anyway. Um, we're just sitting here making some recordings about random stuff. Isn't that right? Well, today we're going to be discussing mechanical pencils. We're going to be showing some nice mechanical pencils. Yes. You know, I have a collection of pencils. I have some new pencils that have been recently added to the collection. <laughs> now, um, it's going to be special to show this in honor of Evan Rogers. Um, we're going to have to get the camera position somehow good, but we want to get a good, you know, view where we can have the camera aiming down. Now, we have no tripod. We had one, but it um, went into the um, state of being non-existent, went so it only exists in our minds. So, you could possibly just show each mm, each pencil um, individually see, and pull it up to the camera. Um, the thing is, I want you to do the writing test. I want you to be talking about all the video, things like that. You know what I'm right. Well, if you want, I could hold the camera while you do some tests, and then you could hold the other one, or vice versa. That might be your only chance. Maybe, 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 you see. Hmm. First up in our showing of the mechanical pencils is a Pentel Graph Gear 1000. Now, this was an expensive pencil, but it is a very nice pencil. Um... It's well liked amongst pencil enthusiasts, and um, we're going to be having Evan Rogers try it out. Watch out, clicks. Then the thing retracts when you release the handle here. Okay, I'm about to test out this pencil here. It's really very nice. Just going to be gentle with it. Be very delicate. It's got. If look at the grip here, it's got a. It's got an odd grip. Like it seems like this is like a metallic thing overall. But then the little there's little tiny mini grips. I guess if you could call them. Okay, and there's this thing here that says HB. I'm wondering what that means. HB lab. It's kind of lead it is, I guess. Okay. Well, I'll do a test here. Try to do it quickly. Describe to me the input of the lead itself, the feel of the pencil I'm writing, and everything. Hmm. This is probably one of the best pencils I've ever written with. It's a very high quality. Um, it's just it's nice and dark it writes real solid there's there's like it feels like there's no interruption or bump on the page like it, as I do this right here it's like it's nice it's like you can just flow like this you can just flow everywhere and it just feels nice and uninterrupted that's really the best way for me to describe it. It's a nice flow. It's uninterrupted ride, and you can just go right in to do whatever. It's very good. The the input is decent. It's 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 in such a way when you write that you almost don't feel like you're writing with a pencil. So input almost doesn't apply, but that that makes it interesting because you know it's just like oh, am I writing with a pencil? I didn't know that. Okay, it should be recording now. And now we're gonna give some um operation to the Graph Gear 1000 console. So let's do this. Um, it's telling me your tape is running low. That's a camcorder has no tape inside. Oh yeah. <laughs> So give me some statements about this. It's very nice. Yeah? How would you describe the input and the style of writing? It's 
pretty good input. It's a nice feel. It's pretty nice. How is it compared to some of your other pencils? Um, is it a heavier mark than usual? Is it? Is it's it, a pretty good dark mark. Does it yeah, feel a dark mark? Does it feel lighter to use than your other pencils? It does have a kind of a lightness to it. It's interesting. It is interesting. Do you, do you see what I meant whenever I was talking about the whole flow thing, where it just almost doesn't even feel like you're writing. It's just such a like yeah. smooth write. Isn't it nice? Mm, indeed. Looks like you got what you paid for here. It's a good pencil. And what an interesting feature. Okay, there's some some first observations I make about this pencil. Pencil. Go ahead and zoom in on the pencil here, if you would. Well, first of all, this this thing on the grip near the writing end of the pencil is very like rough feeling, very metallic. It almost seems like it's not even really a grip, but it's definitely in the sense that you probably won't slip when you're using it. It's just very rough feeling. On the uh, on the body of the pencil, we can see it's 0.5 millimeters. That's a a good a good size. It says um, what does it say? It says A U A N or something. Alvin. Alvin. Okay, this is kind of hard to distinguish. It says draft slash matic. Do you have any idea what that might mean? It's a drafting pencil. Oh, okay. It's I see. automatic, but it's very nice. It says number D M O five. Any any comments there? Model number. <laughs> And of course, the, there's the HB again telling us about that. Hmm. I never did show the eraser on the Graph Gear 1000. It's a white eraser on the Graph Gear 1000. A simple one. Here's the one white eraser on the Draftomatic. And of course, one thing that distinguishes certain erasers is that some of the very old ones are green. Yeah, make sure it's pushed in all the way. Green erasers were on the very old Pentels. Okay, I'm going to go ahead and test out this. Alvin okay. Draftmatic. Some observations about this draftmatic. Um, the grip, zoom, show them the grip here. The grip, this thing right here is very metallic. It's really quite odd. Uh, to be honest, it's really somewhat uncomfortable when riding. Um, although it does give you the feeling that you're probably not going to slip. Like if your hand's sweaty or something, it's just really rough. But at the same time, it's a, it's a bit uncomfortable when you're riding with it. Um, that is what I think anyway. Um, the mark that it makes, the mark, it's decent, um, but but when you write it, like I wrote here, it, it feels kind of flat. And if you if you uh, go ahead and observe how this looks on the camera, well, as much as you can anyway, you probably can't tell, but this is a lighter mark. And now compare it to up here where it has the Pentel mark. I don't know if you can tell, but this is really much finer looking. Um, on the pencil, and so it it's, it's, it just feels very flat, uh, as if you were uh, writing with a regular pencil that had not been sharpened in some time. Um, it kind of gives you that sensation because it doesn't write dark. Um, so <clears throat> it's a good pencil, but uh, I prefer the Graph Gear. It it writes uh, darker, I think, and more fine. Um, and it's just it's a weird grit definitely on this pencil, but. It's it definitely a cool looking pencil. I'll give it that. I like the heavy metallic look on it. It's very cool. We're now going to have Mr. Klein try out the Draftmatic and see what he thinks. Mr. Klein, as you begin writing, just think about um, some observation points. Think about the grip. How does it feel? Does it help you keep your grip? And is it uncomfortable unlike most other grips? Also, think about how fine does the lead feel and does it feel like good input? 
Well, the grip is pretty rough, I have to say. What about the sound? Is the sound of the pencil writing on the paper distinctive from other pencils? It has a kind of a s s s s way to it, kind of a, a, just kind of a little distinctive sound, you know, just some, what you excuse me for a second. So let's see if we can pick up some of the sound. To the best of your abilities, Mr. Klein, describe how the sound is. So it's kind of a smooth-like, but not quite smooth. It has a little bit of a sh 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 to it. But it is pretty nice, I have to say. Hmm. Um, there's a very special story of significance in my life with this pencil. Thing is, is in the third grade, in the year 2000, December 2000, Christmas time 2000, I got a Christmas present that was three mechanical pencils. What I got, or one of them, one of them that I got was a draftmatic. It was a 0.7 millimeter draftmatic. The barrel was blue, signifying for the 0.7 millimeter standard color. Unlike this one, which is 0.5. Yeah. The thing is, is I like 0.5 better. I didn't have the draftmatic for long in the third grade. I do remember using it, doing some homework up in the attic at my old house. I remember that distinctively. I even called it the Derftmatic for fun because that's how I first read it. <laughs> but um, I didn't like .7 that much, and it ended up, you know, back in those days, I would trade mechanical pencils a lot, so it ended up that um, I traded it away. Oh, I see. But later on this year, ten years later, well, ten years because it would have been 2001, mainly when I was using it, because it would have been January 2001, and sometime in 2001 I would have got, gotten rid of it. But um, this year, 2011, 10 years later, I went to an office store in Norman, Oklahoma called Copeland's, and that's where I got this pencil, the Draftmatic 0.5 with black barrel, because this is the standard 0.5 color. Um, uh, at Copeland's in Norman, Oklahoma was also where I bought the Graft Gear 1000. I was wanting to get that pencil after I saw some YouTube videos that people did showing that pencil. I thought, it's a pretty nice pencil. I'd like to get it. So I was wanting to get that pencil, but I didn't want to have to order it on the internet. So when I went where I went to with Copeland's, I was in luck, because there it was. That's interesting that you mentioned it was in Norman, Oklahoma. Isn't that where um, Oklahoma University is? It is. Okay. I was in Norman recently as well. Um, very interesting. Very nice to hear. Well, the first thing I noticed about this pencil, if you'll uh, show the pencil here, is it's got a distinctive grip. Most grips um, on the pencil of this size, in my experience, they tend to be a little bit oversized. So if you could run your finger on this, it almost, like see how my finger almost doesn't move? See how the, the grip is just like, it's almost exactly on the pencil. It's just a little bit raised right here. Um, that's interesting because I don't see that really a lot of times with pencils like this. Um, that's just been my experience. Another thing that I immediately noticed is it does not say the lead type on it. It just says Zebra M402 Japan. Matter of fact, I, know, I, I never paid attention to that. I Come to think of it, it doesn't say the lead size. That is strange. It I is. will go ahead and tell you firsthand it is 0 0.5. Right. I'm guessing that you can surmise the type of lead usually just by how it looks and what kind mm -hmm. of how it When it uses the lead size, you can usually tell. Mm -hmm. Especially when in the feel of how it writes, sometimes you can tell. Hard to see with the camera here, but it is 0 0.5. It's uh, thinner than the uh, sometimes more common 0 0.7 lead. Uh, I don't know if the trend is still this way today, but it used to be that it was much easier to find 0.7 than it was 0.5. It still pretty much is, but it's not hard to find 0.5 either, although 0.7 stands most common in the cheaper mechanical pencils. Right. Okay, well, I'll go ahead and test this pencil, and I'll first look for consistency in how it, the flow of how it writes. It's very important in a good pencil. You're right about it being important and good. Listen for my story later.
This pencil tends to write a little bit lighter than most pencils of its size. It is a little bit unexpected. It has a, a lighter mark than some other ones. That, of course, could just be from the angle you're doing the lead. From The angle was pretty straight, and, but I think if you make it a sharper angle like this, Wait, let me get a better view of the sharper angle. Just okay. As you can see, it was going. like this Keep before, going. but here's the sharper angle like this, just by raising my hand some. I don't know how well you can see, but well, I'm trying to get a good glimpse of the sharper angle he's using. Oh, here's a much better view, as you can see. Of course, it doesn't look perfect, but if you use a sharper angle that way, or if you use it more this way, you can get a heavier mark. That may not be from the pencil itself, it may just simply be from the way the lead's striking the paper and, you know, the angle. So, you know, the consistency could be affected by that, but overall, it's a decent pencil in the way it writes. Um, I'll go ahead and test for input and see how hard I can push it down. Now, whenever Don't we... Don't push it too hard. Oh, yes. you got to be careful. But whenever I talk about input, it's basically, you know, how does it feel? Is it feel a feeling of comfort? Does it feel nice when you push down harder and make a, like, make a more heavy yeah, mark? Yeah, the, the, the actual feel that the mark gives. Um, there's a distinctive feel, not from the way it feels in your hand, like the pencil feeling in your hand. That's not what we're talking about. We're talking about the way it actually feels when the lead goes against the, pen, the paper. Because some pencils have a really satisfying feel, and others just don't feel very satisfying. Yep, some feel very cheaply made and not good at all. But we'll test the input of this pencil. So how is the input? Sometimes you'll do this. It's called the line test. It's a good way to find out input. It's got decent input. Um, there have been better ones and there have been worse ones, but it's decent as far as input goes. It's not anything extremely bad or extremely good. It's a decent pencil. Uh, I, I like this pencil. It has pretty good flow. The most interesting thing I found about this pencil is that the grip is just... It's very nice how it's put on there, again, just how it's consistent with how it's made for the pencil, because a lot of times they don't really take time to make a good grip, you know, it might slip off your pencil. Yeah, and, that's the cheaper ones. And the, the yeah, the cheaper <laughs> ones sometimes it's designed with the grip being part of the pencil, so yes. if you lose the yes. grip, you lose a, like a big chunk of the pencil and yes. it feels so weird and you can't write with yeah. it. <laughs> That's weird. Yeah. So, a good pencil, the Zebra M402. Will you, will you also be using the Zebra, the M402? Yes, I will be using the Zebra M2 for, M402. We made sure that on the pencil testing place, both me and Evan get to use these pencils. And, um, I'll do some working with it now. I'm going to try to get a different angle here. Get a top down view here. I think it's pretty satisfying, I have to say. How would you compare it with the previous pencil? The Draftomatic. This isn't as harsh feeling as the Draftomatic, I guess. It's, mm. But it feels, it feels pretty good. Harsh feeling. Can you elaborate on that? Do you this mean. This is kind of a. Do you mean in the way of the grip or just in the way of the flow? The flow. Mm. This one's more... Pretty good. I see. Um, um, it's a pretty nice pencil. Now I have a story to tell. Okay. This pencil is very special to me. Now, I only bought it in Oklahoma at Office Depot. Here's the thing. In the fourth grade, in the year 2001, um, uh, I was big in mechanical pencils. And I traded mechanical pencils with many classmates. And um, sometimes, if there was a pencil I really wanted that a different classmate had, I would trade several pencils for that one, because they wouldn't be willing to just trade one pencil for it. And um, 
So, in my trading games, I acquired one of these pencils. The thing is, is that one, the clip, the metal clip was actually completely gone. Mm. And all the writing on there was completely smeared off. Like wow. it had no markings. So it was just, it looked like this. That's unusual. And um, I believe I borrowed it from, I mean, traded it to get it from a classmate by the name of Dylan. And um, and uh, it was a nice pencil. I really liked it a lot. And later on, the pencil ended up getting traded away or something like that. So I didn't have it for that long. But I had it for a period of time. And I liked it a lot. And years and years went by. Remember, it's been 10 years since then. And um, I've always, you know, I've always remembered that pencil, I remembered it was really nice, but I never knew who made it, and I always just assumed, oh, it's a, one of those pencils I had but was discontinued, So, because there's, there's plenty of pencils, certain pencil models that I had back in the day that have been discontinued, but um, such as the Sanford um, side effect, or side track, a side track by Sanford was a really cool pencil I had had, but it's no longer available and um, I don't have it anymore but anyway back to this I thought I would never be able to find that one again but then I went to a saint's house and there they happened to have the same kind turned out they had only bought it last year a pen and pencil set at Office Depot so I wanted to go and I got a pen and pencil set of these pencils pen, pen and pencil that same model I had in the fourth grade the M402 pencil and the F402 pen. Interesting. I wonder what's the difference in why one's called an M and one why it's called an F. To differentiate, because the M's the pencil and the F is the pen. Ah, simple. Okay. A couple of first first minute things on this. The, uh... Oh, what do you call this? Oh, I can't think. The clip, I guess. Yeah. The clip, it's interesting design. It's got an open thing right here. So I suppose it feel you might think at first that oh I can just take this off if if I wanted to, but you no. You can. You can. That that's interesting. Have you tried that before? I haven't, but other people have. I see. So it's interesting. It's kind of like a custom thing here. You can keep it if you want or not. But uh, at 0 0.5, the grip um, is typical of these types of pencils. It's just a bunch of uh, grooves. It makes an interesting sound. Just, just uh, um, it's not really too uncomfortable, but it's not, it's not the best grip. But this pencil wasn't really designed for uh, with a grip in mind. The model is P three one P S three one five here. Model number there P S three one five. Let's check out the eraser here. Ah, this is what we discussed earlier. As you can see, the eraser is green. This signifies that this is a very early pencil, perhaps a very old model. Cassette Master, can you estimate what uh, year that this pencil might be from? I'm not sure what year. I mean, I could just take a wild guess and say maybe it's from the 80s at some point. But that's a wild guess. I could be wrong. I could be right. But it seems that on the older Pentel pencils, they had a green eraser. Because I've seen a bunch of different old Pentel pencils. They always have the green one. And the ones you get nowadays have a white one. Interesting. Perhaps if we do some more research into the subject, we can have in our next video some information about that. As it would be interesting to know because there may be a specific reason for which the erasure design was changed. Or there it may not be. be. That would be interesting. Anyway, I'm going to go ahead and do a field test of this pencil. Click it out once the, and you're ready to go. The first thing I notice is that when you immediately click it, it just increases the length of this uh, holder. Of course, it's very short lead, but I like to click it a couple of few times so that I can see the lead a bit better, so that I know that it's ready to go. We'll go ahead and test it here. As you can see, this is a pretty good flow. 
it feels very solid when you're writing. Um, unlike the other pencils, they were slightly larger and it, it, it has this flow feeling. This one's just very, very, for new musical people out there, it's very like, it's much like staccato, like da, 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 da. Whereas the other one was very legato and very flowing and smooth. This feels very much rougher, just much like that. And it's good because it just feels uninterrupted, but it feels much more solid than one would probably be used to if they want a very good flow with their pencil. This has this one has a good flow, not interrupted, but it just feels more solid than many pencils. It's very nice. Next, I'm going to go ahead and test the input here. Don't push too hard. Hmm. It looks like the lead's been ejected back into the pencil, so I'm going to have to click it a little more. Hmm. This has some very good input because of the solidness of the feel. Just the way it is, how it's very staccato whenever you want to write with it. This is a pencil that's got very nice input. You have to be careful with it though because if you push down the lead hard enough, the lead will actually rec recede back into the pencil. And of course that's, you know, can be slightly annoying because you're, well, I was trying to write with that. And then, <laughs> and then you have to click it out again. And, um, you just have to do it all over again. Overall, it's a very nice pencil. Some elaboration on this pencil. Evan clicked the lead out all the way until the lead was visible. But he can actually have another way to do it. You can simply do one click and you're ready to go. When that, um little metal barrel sticks out. It carries some lead along with it. So when you're writing, the barrel recedes into the pencil just enough to let just enough lead out to do marks. Interesting. How would you describe the consistency and flow of this pencil as compared to other pencils that we have tested. Very nice. You're right about the Sakata marks. It doesn't feel as quite it's, as flowing. It is very good for writing small, like. Would you say it has a very fine lead? Yes, yeah, very good. As you can see, it can be used for even for writing really small. It's very accurate. Yes, it's a good word. Accurate. If I could have thought about that earlier. It's a very accurate pencil because it's it's not kind of hard to do it. Like it doesn't kind of go out beyond your control. Right. It's very controlled. It's very good. Well, why don't you tell us about what you think about the input of this pencil? It's pretty good. Some surfaces may be better than others. Sometimes you may want to use a different pencil but to me on the surface, but sometimes this one's like just right. This one I have found um, quite enjoyable in the use of taking um, notes and pre-calculus. It's very good for working with math problems. A lot of these good pencils are great for working with math. That strange clicking noise you hear in the background is the keyboard. Because we're resting the uh the notebook on a piano keyboard just because it's convenient. So that's yeah. the noise you hear. Time to watch me use the green eraser. The green eraser. Remember, this is a somewhat rare eraser, we think, to the best of our knowledge. And they're not made like this anymore. They're always white now. There's less you know that it's a vintage pencil. How is the erasing? Does the erase is quite good. Does it seem to erase the marks completely, or does it leave a slight smudge? It's, it doesn't smudge, but it does. Is you can see the original mark a little bit, but it's not that bad. You can, it's right here. Mm -hmm. And um, I'll try again. Keep the camera right there. And then let's try erasing that again. Sorry for the movement. It's a little harder to control the camera right now. 
but I gotta say it is a very good eraser. It runs nice and smooth. Now if you haven't noticed about these kind of erasers, look at this. Some people think, oh it's a small eraser, I'll use it, make it flat, and then it's no good. But look at this. Maybe you didn't know this, but um, you take the eraser out. It's actually a long eraser, so when you run out of eraser, you push up more outward, and you got yourself some new eraser. Interesting. I'm sure that I didn't know that. It's very good to know. As also can be seen, some of these pencils have a pen. If I can get that in focus. Some of them have a pen. And the pen is for clearing up lead jams. Excuse me, the lead just fell right out. I need to put the eraser back on, but... See if there's any more, there's another lead right there. to have a good amount of lead inside my pencils and um, I wasn't thinking so whenever I took the pencil the other direction the lead just slipped right out but thing is this little pin that sticks from the eraser is made for sticking into the lead hole and clearing out jams mm -hmm. so it's very useful that's a very useful feature I never would have known what that was for the designers at Pentel were very thoughtful with these pencils they really made some excellent pencils it seems so um, the pencils like this are very well made more of you are probably familiar with Pentel's P205 I believe the best-selling pencil of Pentel um, they still make this model to, to this day and they even had it for a long enough time it does have a green eraser on this older model It's also an excellent pencil, but does not have the receding metal bar like this one does. The PS315 is a more unique version of this pencil. But in this pencil here, I'll just do a quick showing of it. It's, it writes well. It's also great for taking math notes. Um, it's very nice. The thing is also, the green erasers come, or well, not, with the small erasers come very good for erasing mistakes in math because sometimes you have to erase a really small part so it's, very, it's just great for math and um, I have many other pencils I'm not going to show each and every one of these pencils that would just take too long and it would bore you to death but I just gotta say I've got some other nice pencils such as this one here this is a very vintage pencil it's a barrel automatic TD5 I believe drafting pencil it's got a um, grip a lot like the Draftmatic, except it's this finer type. Um, it writes very well and very dark too. And um, look at its old traditional colored pink eraser. Hmm. Interesting. It's a very nice pencil. Indeed. This has been Evan and Ricky Talk Mechanical Pencils. We hope that you've enjoyed our program, and we will have more for you, we hope, sometime in the future. That's to be announced at this time. We don't really know when we'll do this again, but again, we do hope you've enjoyed our features because we do enjoy these pencils. It, it really does uh, help uh, just an enthusiast to inform someone, to entertain someone, whatever your reason for watching our videos, we thank you. And we hope to provide you with more entertainment and more good information and analysis of these pencils in the future. So I hope you enjoyed our video. Um, it's great. Mechanical pencils, I think, are just fantabulous. If I could just tell one last story. Um, I first um, got really into mechanical pencils in the first grade. I remember um, my mom had a, a 0 0.7 Pentel pencil with a push on the side. It was a nice pencil and that model is still made to this day. And that was back in 1998 when I found about it and it was really nice. 
and I thought, man, this is great. I like mechanical pencils. I wanted mom to get more mechanical pencils. And I love using mechanical pencils. So ever since then, it's been 13 years of mechanical pencil experience. Long tradition. <laughs> when did you first get into mechanical pencils, Evan? Well, like, you know. Well, the, uh... Uh, of course, I haven't been an avid collector my whole life. It kind of goes through phrase, through phases for me. Um, the time was around the second grade whenever you introduced them and showed how it could be fun to collect them. It was around that time when I decided, hey, this could be a fun thing to do to collect them um, because it was it was different from just using an ordinary pencil. And I discovered that really, I guess that I could just fool with them more and you know do more things. Of course, they would usually distract me a lot. Um, and, and it actually happened one time that because um, there had been so much commotion with all the pencils and this trading, third grade. It, we would uh, <laughs> that they actually banned mechanical yes. pencils. In the third grade, my teacher was Miss Cool, and um, I would always play with mechanical. And in the third grade, I would always play with mechanical pencils and be taking them apart and looking at the lead and putting it back and always messing around with them and other people too would be kind of getting involved with mechanical pencils that finally Miss Poole said that she would ban mechanical pencils starting at the next year which meant the year was 2000 and starting it after Christmas break they would be banned. When I heard that they would be banned I stomped my foot. I stomped my feet on the ground and threw a fit. Remember, I was only a child then. I threw a big fit. I yelled, I stomped my feet and everything. Um, so at the time, actually, whenever I got the Draftmatic, and I talked about earlier how I got that one in the third grade, the .7 version, which I don't have anymore, um, that was after they were banned. So I could only use it at home. I couldn't use it at school. It was unfortunate. But I do remember using it on homework. Um, later on in that school year, I, during recess, kindly walked up to Mr. I mean, to Miss Poole and kindly asked her if, 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 if I could just bring two mechanical pencils and I won't be distracted with them anymore and do that. So she said yes, so we then could use them. But um, let me tell you, um, it's the kind of the funny thing was during the time mechanical pencils were banned, um, I got into regular pencils. I started getting lots of different wooden pencils and lots of different sharpeners. I was always looking for a really nice sharpener that didn't snap the end off the lead, the end of the lead off after you sharpen. I'm sure you've known about that, Evan, how they snap the lead end off. It makes it take more time than it should. Yeah, and it always gets stuck in the sharpener, so you have to try to get it out. I always was trying to look for a sharpener that didn't do that, looking for some really nice ones. So basically, even when mechanical pencils were banned, the love for pencils never left. 